modest man, I was warned that, but um, some people might be surprised to learn that you swam the channel. Now that is slightly exaggerated in the sense that uh, I have, as I've referred to earlier, two brothers who are blind as well, and a gentleman um, decided that he wants to encourage us to do this relay swim by which you alternately swim um, and then you rest while the others swim and then in you, in you go again for sections of basically an hour, uh, sometimes a little bit more, but basically you do it an hour at a time. And uh, we did this swim in 1969 and we did it in 14 hours and 38 minutes. And I remember uh, it, it was very strange because in order to keep our direction right, because no one is allowed to touch you uh, while you're swimming or in any way have connection to you. So we clipped a radio to the side of the boat and that gave us our direction so that we could swim along through the night. And we were very lucky. Uh, we didn't see any jellyfish that people talk about and believe it or believe it not, we didn't see any sharks. And, and, <laughs> and um, so that was w w one of my great memories to do it with my two brothers and this other gentleman, Dennis Moore uh, as well, which was um, something quite, but you see, I think, and this is where things get difficult for me, I think that by being blind, I have done some things that other people have, have never done. Um, one of the biggest examples possibly is cross-country skiing in Norway. Now, it has grown since we started in a little place called Beiterstolen on the west side of Norway. Um, they had um, a disabled skiing week and each individual skier had a guide and a teacher. And these people used to come from the gymnast school of Oslo. And, uh, well, I don't think the others are going to be much good because at the end of our week, we had a 25 kilometer race. And even though we were thrashed by all the Scandinavian countries, I won by a long way for the British um, entries. And, um, I enjoyed skiing a lot, though it was very hard work. And if I just may take a few moments to tell you, the first morning I went with this girl and she was such a slave driver, it was unbelievable. And when I got to lunch, my first ever skiing attempt, I got to the table and literally I was so tired, I couldn't pick my knife and fork up. And after a while I managed to eat some lunch and I went down and sat down in the rest area. And this girl came up and said, it's time to get your skis on again. We're going again now. And I thought, you've got to be joking. But by the end of the week, she'd driven me so hard. It was due to her, really, that, 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 that I, I won the race for, for the British people. So I, I probably wouldn't have done that if I'd been sighted. I might have, but I probably wouldn't have. And, uh, um, and as I, I did this channel swim. And then um, when my father died in 1995, I made a stupid mistake and he left me, well, I don't mind saying out loud, the sum of just over £2,000. And I said to the family, my dad wouldn't want me to save it. He'd want me to spend it on something to enjoy myself. So I said, we will go to New Zealand. Because it's a very long story and I won't go into this, but I had a friend who used to work in the bank in London with me and we kept in touch with her. And um, her husband came over here and spent some time with us. And we always said we'd try and go back there. And when my father died, I said, we'll put that to the front. And we went to New Zealand and we did bungee jumps, uh, my daughter and I, and uh, loved, loved every minute of it. And um, uh, that was another experience which I might and I might not have done through being a, a blind person. Um, then uh, nothing to do with being blind, but perhaps one of the things I'm most proud of, I have to say, is that I have donated 160 whole blood donations and the Blood Donor Association were really good to me. They gave me some umbrellas and a, and a plate and uh, several other things. And they invited you to a meal. Oh, yes, and I went for a big meal at the... Was, a Dor no. was it a Dorchester? Was no, it Dorchester? the Connaught Rooms. The Connaught Rooms. But anyway, I went to the Connaught Rooms. and We, we had a, a lovely lunch and they took some pictures and everything because apparently you don't even get one of these a year that get over 150 whole blood donations. And I was even more lucky in that in the last half of my donations, I was able to donate to something called a baby panel, which um, is an exclusive club in a way because only 3% of people don't have a, an antibody which, uh, affects, which would affect a baby or babies. And uh, 
Uh, fortunately, I, I d didn't have this problem and I was one of the 3%, so I was very pleased. And I think, quite honestly, it was one of the, fa the thought that it was going to the baby panel that perhaps drove me on to go up to Oxford Street and into Margaret Street uh, every three months and, uh, and, and, and carry on when I uh, retired or was made redundant in 1999. And I, and I kept on going to uh, Leighton Buzzard um, mobile unit until I'd reached this 160. And then my arm became so um, scarred. scarred where the needles went in that even the blood people themselves said that it is becoming so hard to get the blood out that I retired with my 160 donations. And that, quite honestly, among all the things I've done, that's the thing that, possibly surprisingly, but that's the thing I'm most proud of. If there is something that I'm equally as proud of was that one of the things I loved was agriculture. And at one time in our lives, we had a little farm, which all three of us invested in, which eventually we had to sell because um, a, a couple of the boys wanted to opt out of it. So we had to sell the farm in order to give them their share back. But that's neither here nor there. But apropos of which, I went to an agricultural college at Oaklands um, with 45 other students. Now this, before Barbara came along and completed the process, this is when I realised that there was a wider world outside the blind world and that it was important to get into it um, because there were 45 agri students and we used to go down to a little pub in St Albans called the Bunch of Cherries and have fun and we had uh, good times and everything. But at the end of it, we had exams for a certificate of agriculture and so on and so forth. And um, of the 45, only two of us got distinctions. And in my own braille, that I took my brown notes and everything among all the, all the other students who were or fully sighted people, I was one of the ones who got the distinction of the 45 people. And quite honestly, I think that was a good effort. You know, it seems a little bit silly maybe asking somebody who's done so much if they still got anything less left on their um, but the modern parlay bucket list. Is there anything on yours? Um, yes, there are two things, both related to what I've referred to earlier. Um, I would simply love to Pat Sprinter Sacra. I would give a lot to Pat Sprinter because I absolutely loved him. He was a superb little horse, a well, big horse. And, uh, and um, I did have a wish list to swim with the dolphins, but I did that when I was in Cuba. And uh, uh, I, I've actually got a picture of two dolphins giving me a kiss. Um, <laughs> believe it or believe it not. Um, and uh, that's on my wish list. And um, should I ever be at the point when I know that the end is nigh, I would simply love to do what I did with my mum, because when my mum got cancer in 1970, she knew she was ill and it was going to be her last child. And as I say, I pushed her around in her wheelchair quite a lot at Cheltenham that year. And uh, I took her to the uh, restaurant because I knew it was going to be the last time. And I took her for lunch at the restaurant. And uh, Persian War won the champion hurdle, which was absolutely what she wanted to see happen for her last Cheltenham. And uh, it, it would great, greatly please me if I knew that at the end was night, if someone took me to the restaurant at Cheltenham and let me have a nice lunch and thoroughly enjoy it. And the other thing is, uh, which people aren't going to go a long way about, is I'd love to go to Old Trafford and have a box for the afternoon <laughs> and sit and, and watch the football up there. Because And they're, they're the loves of my life. And, uh, and uh, the other thing is, which is obviously something out, completely out of my control, and what keeps me going when I had cancer a, a few years ago, what keeps me going is I would simply love to see my granddaughter get married. Thank you.